him praise. Amen. Now y'all turn the music up at the end. Bless the Lord. Amen. In the book of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. If you would with me, please. Romans chapter 4. And they have these scriptures up, hopefully. Uh, we're going to go through a lesson this morning about faith and the simplicity of faith. Somebody say the simplicity of faith. And, and I'm on this lesson and have been for a while, as I said, the things that I'm hearing echo in society that Jesus doesn't matter, faith doesn't matter, you're believing in the wrong thing. And I'm going to show you Jesus' whole uh, line and teaching was on faith and believing him. Faith is your confidence in God. Everybody say, faith is, faith is. my confidence in God, confidence in God. And, his word, and his word, that whatever he promised, whatever he promised. will come to pass. So in other words, we got to have faith. We got to have confidence in God. We got to be fully persuaded. The Bible said Abraham was fully, fully persuaded in his mind that what God promised he was able to perform. Anybody fully persuaded today? Jesus said that we ought to have faith in God in Mark 11, have faith in God, believe in him. Ephesians said we ought to come into the unity of faith. So the Bible talks about faith from the beginning to the end. It talks about what? Faith from the beginning to the end. In Revelation it says the cowards and the unbelievers or the fearful and the unbelievers along with liars and all others shall not inherit the kingdom of God or be cast in the lake of fire. And so obviously believing God is vitally important. What did I say? Believe Believing God is vitally important. So let's go over to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And I just want to look at verse uh, number 3. Verse number 3. And it talks about Abraham, our father, according to the flesh. And it said he has nothing to boast about if he's going to boast. And then verse 3. If we can read verse 3 aloud. Come on, can you see it? What does it say? For what does the scripture say? Come on, read that aloud for me. For what does the scripture say? What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. Abraham did what? Abraham did what? And it was accounted to him for... It was accounted to him for... Come on, how many know Abraham believed God? Anybody believe God today? I said, is there anybody that believed God today? Let's go over to James chapter 2. In James chapter 2, I believe about the 24th verse, uh, we'll see the same thing. In the 24th verse of James chapter 2, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In verse 23, in verse 23 of James, in verse 23 of James, let's see how important it is. Somebody says it's important to believe God. It's important to have faith in God. So the Bible said Abraham had faith. Abraham trusted God. And that's the whole center of this message. The simplicity of faith is not what you do, it's what you believe. So if you're trying to do something without believing something, you're wasting your time. Jesus said in that day, that last day, many will say that I've cast out devils, I've prophesied in your name. And Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew. Your neighbor up, tell him I'm, this is important. Y'all can't go to sleep on me. And half you don't believe, if you don't have no victory in your life, you need this. So get your hand off your jaw, wake up. I don't care what you did last night. You came here, so let's spend some time. Are y'all with me? Abraham did what? He believed God. So in the Old Testament, it said God made Abraham very rich. Most of you, Abraham left his father and mother. Most of you trying to do something or have what Abraham had. Galatians said we are the sons and daughters of faith and the sons and daughters of Abraham. We are trying to have what Abraham had and we don't know how he got it. He didn't get it just by leaving his parents. He didn't get it just by doing something. He didn't get it just by offering up Isaac. That's all the stuff James was talking about. He did it because he what? Believed. If you don't believe God you won't do anything if you don't believe God you won't do what he promised you won't act on what he promised so in in, in James chapter 2 verse 23 and the scripture was fulfilled come on everybody read with me and the scripture was fulfilled which says what did it say come on what does it say Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for it was accounted to him for, anybody know what righteousness? I know you do. It means to be in right standing with God, to be upright or be straight. So when you're straight with God, it's only because you believe God. You're not righteous if you don't believe him. Come on, Paul said, Romans 10, my prayer and desire for Israel is they might be saved. Because I bear record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. They be ignorant of God's righteousness. They're ignorant of God's so we're trying to be in right standing by going to church, paying our tithe, singing in the choir or not singing. 
Working in the church or not working. We just show up every Sunday, live how we want to live. So six days out of the week. But see, that's not righteous. Righteousness is to believe God. Amen. None but the righteous shall see him. The righteous and the pure in heart. Amen. And we're trying to be, we have a zeal, so you can act, zeal is enthusiasm, charisma. We're acting out, we're doing things, and we wonder, God, why is this not working? Some of you even ask God, why is bad things happening to good people? Why am I going through what I'm going through? But see, God allows the enemy, like he did with Job, to go after Job. Why? He wanted Job to believe him. He wanted Job to trust him. Even James talks about Job. He said, Job kept the faith. Faith is not what you do. Faith is what you believe. Is there anybody here believe God? So when you believe God, you're in right standing. When you believe God, you're straight up. When you be believe God, you're coming correct. Amen. But how many of us are doing things? Lord, I don't know if this is going to work. Come on, I'm broken. I'm paying my tithes. I don't know why I keep doing this because this ain't coming through. See, you already broke, so you ain't got nothing to lose. You might as well do like Donald Trump said. Y'all black folk might as well vote. You ain't got nothing to lose. Why? He's making fun of your condition. He's making fun of how you've been eroded all these years. He's making fun of how all of you just Democrat or Republican just with no mind is what people tell you. But you ought to vote for people you believe in. If you don't believe in them, no matter what party they in, they shouldn't be able to lie or say and do what they want to do. And you still say, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat. No, what do you believe? So people got to stand up for what's right. And what's right, you got to stand up for God. You got to get straight with God and do it his way. Because when you're righteous, Abraham was counted to him for righteousness. And he was, read with me, called a friend of God. Any people in here got God as your friend? Come on, you remember that hit with him? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs. What a privilege it is to carry everything to. Why is it a privilege? Because if I'm his friend, he cares about me. If I'm his friend, I can cast all my cares upon him because he cares. If I'm his friend, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. If I'm his friend, Psalm 107 and 20, he sent his word and healed me. If I'm his friend, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. If I'm his friend, without me, you can do absolutely If I'm his friend, greater is he that is, than he that is where? If I'm his friend, I'm the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. If I'm his friend, he shows me how to profit. He gives me an advantage. Come on, somebody. If I'm his friend, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I don't fear no evil because the Lord is with his friends. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. He said to disciples, I call you friends. Is there anybody here want to be a friend of God? Is there anybody in here a friend of God? So you should feel like if you have the best friend in the world, it's not your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it ought to be Jesus. And if Jesus is your best friend, you got to know he'll never abandon me. You got to believe that whatever I'm going through, I'm in right standing with Jesus. I'm in right standing with God. Don't just call God friend, let God call you friend. And how will God call you friend? Because you believe him. Not what you do, but Lord, I paid my tithes. I cast out devil. I, I, and Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you. How many got some of those friends and people that call themselves a friend, but you don't really know them? They're not honest with you. They won't come to your aid. They abandon you at the worst times in your life. Anybody had those kind of friends? They speak to you and socialize when they feel like it. They only come to get something from you, but not give anything to you. Let me tell some of y'all friends in here of God. You're a friend of God, you ought to be a worshiper. Amen. If you're a friend of God, you ought to be a praiser. If you're a friend of God, you ought to get up in the morning and say, wait a minute, this is a day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad. So you ought to say, thank you, God, for another day. 
It ain't what I'm going through. I'm your friend. You got my back. You give angels charge over me. Some of y'all wonder what keeps me. What keeps, well, I lost my family member. I lost this. I lost my job. I lost that. See, if I ain't lost God, I'm still covered. This person treated me this way, this way. See, I love God because he loved me first. I love God because he proves himself and his love to me. Is there any friends in here? So even James was saying, show me your works uh, and, uh, by faith, and faith uh, without works is dead. Some of us got confused. All he was saying, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. If you're really a tree, you're the salt of the earth. You're the what? Jesus said, light of the world. So if you're a believer, there ought to be some evidence. He didn't say faith is works. He said, show me your faith by your works. So if you're a believer, you're a tither. If you're a believer, you sing the songs of Zion. Come on, the Israelites, when they got, went to Babylon, said, how can we sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? How many know if I trust God in a strange land, I can sing no matter what I'm going through. I can bless the Lord at all times. Is there any friends in here? Somebody praise him. Somebody give him glory. God is worthy of praise. So, so the scripture declares what faith really is. Faith is believing God. Faith is what? Faith is what? Let's look at it. Somebody said, let's see. Go to Matthew 8, 13. In Matthew 8, 13. And of course, we'll explore Hebrews. I won't turn there today, but Hebrews 11 and 6, while you're turning there, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. But without faith, it's what? Come on, can y'all quote that? But without faith is what? Impossible. Impossible to what? He who comes to God must believe. He who comes to God. He who comes to God. He who comes to God. Must pay his tithes. Must sing. Come on. Must dance. Must work in ministry. See, we're doing all these things, but if you don't believe God, what good is it? You must believe that God is, anybody believe he is, and he is a rewarder. Who does he reward? Those that diligently seek. So in other words, I start seeking him because I believe him, because I'm righteous, because he is righteous, because I'm a friend of his, so I want to hang out with my friend. So when do I have time for secular music? When do I have time to go to the club or the party? When do I have time to smoke a joint or a cigarette? When do I have time to get drunk? No, I'm hanging with my friend, and my friend is righteous. And if my friend is righteous, then I'm righteous, and I got to act like the one I hang in. So the Bible said, in him we live, move, and have our breath. We are hanging out. Greater is he that is. How many believers? Come on, in, in, in Matthew 8, 13, read it. Then Jesus said to the centurion who had the sick servant at home, and the servant is sick, he said, can you heal him? Jesus said, sure, I'll come to your house. But he had enough sense, no, you don't want to come to my house because what's going on in my house? See, real friends of God, real believers, listen to me, they're honest. They're honest. Remember Zacchaeus, that little short man climbed the tree to see Jesus? And Jesus walked up and said, come down, today I'm going to your house. And, and Zacchaeus started saying, whatever I've done wrong, I'm getting ready to get it right. Whoever I ripped off, he was a tax collector. Whatever dishonesty. See, when Jesus come to your house, you ought to have some kind of conviction. Don't invite him to your house with a liquor bottle on the table. Don't invite him to your house with pornography on your screen. Don't invite him in your house in the Playboy magazines in the bathroom. Don't even, come on, y'all, he might have to go to the restroom. Don't invite him in your house and you in there just uh, uh, get lying and doing all kinds of sort of things. That's right. The centurion was way with it. The people in my house and what goes under my roof is not right. But I'm a man of authority. Yeah. I believe if you speak a word, come on. I believe if you say it, it's done. Anybody believe it today? I believe if you call my servant healed, he's healed. See, y'all ain't getting this. How many know if the Lord speak from heaven, he ain't got to go to your house physically, but if God said it, he will do it. Somebody say, say a word, Lord. 
Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, go your way. Since you believe me, he said, as you have what? Believe. As you have what? Believe. Come on, somebody, you believe. So let it be done for you. And his servant was healed. Is there any believers today? Let me ask you this. Does anybody need God to do something right now? Come on, any believers need a same hour? Is there any believers? Don't give me that garbage. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You got to know God is the one that owns time. God is time himself. Before there was time, there was God. He stepped out of nowhere and said, nowhere, be somewhere. He took nothing and said, be something. He spoke a word, said, let it be, and it was. So the Bible said in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Everything was made, was made by it. Wasn't anything made that was made without the word. So when God speaks, anybody believe that? So how many today are blessed? Or are you trying to get your blessing? How many blessed today? How many blessed right now? Because the Lord calls you blessed. How many healed right now? Because the Lord called you here, but Pastor, the doctor report, the high blood, the diabetes, the heart attack, the pain is still here. It ain't about what I see, it's about what I Because see, when he's speaking, I believe it. Jesus said, because you believe it, have it right now. Anybody ready to have it? Somebody say, I have it right now. So therefore, my body may be still giving me functions and, and things that causes pain, but I don't believe what I feel. I believe what I believe. Are y'all hearing me? My wallet may still have the same amount of money. My checkbook may have nothing in there. Are y'all fine? But I believe my needs are met. Anybody believe it? Hello? He said, because you believe it, you can have it. Because you believe it, it's done. And that same hour, somebody said that same hour. Yeah. Come on, we dealt with this one, Matthew 9, uh, 9, 28. Matthew 9, 28. And when he had come into the house, when he had done what? When he had done what? I told you this already. Blind men don't follow them all week, following them every day. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David. Some of y'all come to church week after week, month after month. Come on, you're praying the same prayer. You're doing repetition. You're just words but God said do you believe it so the blind men came to him and Jesus what did he say he said to them what did he ask them do you believe I'm what do you believe I'm what and what did they say they said, they said yes Lord amen verse 21 or uh, 22 of Matthew 21 Matthew 21 22 Matthew 22 take authority over this mic and it ain't gonna go out I'm gonna preach this amen, amen. battery is operate people will operate amen sound system gonna operate I speak into existence right now y'all gonna hear this amen. amen and if it go out I'll shout so loud God will project my voice that the last pew up there will hear it amen, amen. Matthew 21 22 and then Matthew 21 25 come on read it aloud and whatever things you ask in prayer come on read it aloud and whatever things you ask in prayer, what should you do? Believing you will what? Believing you will what? Do you know why a lot of our prayers not answered? We don't believe it. We pray, we'll ask people to pray for us, and then we'll turn around right out of our mouth and say, well, it's going to be hard. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to trust God anyway. You just killed what you believe. You got to believe this thing will come to pass. Is there anybody believe your needs are met? That's why I say broke or not broke, you'll still do the right things. Because you believe you got a God working on your behalf that's showing you how to profit. So if God said it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to believe him. I'm going to trust him. Believe it or not, your children don't want to sing. They don't want to work in church. But train up a child in the way he should go. It ain't about what they want. If you left it up to them, they wouldn't even go to school. If you left it up to them, they wouldn't even shower or bathe. If you left it up to them, they wouldn't even brush their teeth. You can't just bring a child home and throw him in the corner and say, be something. You can't just give him a name at the hospital and don't give him no instruction after that. A child left to himself will bring his mother to shame. Why does he bring his mother to shame? Because if he's not trained. 
So there you put your action with your believing, but you got to believe it first. So whatever you pray, Lord, me and my whole house shall be saved. Anybody believe it? I said, anybody believe it? They acting like a fool, but me and my whole house. So you start laying hands on those in your house. You start speaking a word. You believe. Come on. Psalms 112, wealth and riches shall be in my house. So you start going home acting like a wealthy person. You save $5 a week. You save $10. You start speaking to that 5 and 10. And you say, look at my wealth. Believe and you receive it. Look at verse 25, same chapter. Jesus asked this question. Verse 25, then 32. Verse 25, the baptism of John. Jesus asked them, where was it from? Where, what, where is it from? They said, from heaven, he asked them, or from men. And they reasoned among themselves. They what? Reason. Saying, if we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why didn't you believe him? So how many know believing is a choice? That's why you have rap artists. That's why you have people say, I don't believe in Jesus. Just because they say it don't mean Jesus don't exist. Don't mean my eternity and my salvation is not real. Just because they have more money than me. The devil had plenty, but he was cast. Read it. His name was Lucifer. He walked the mountains of God. Come on. He, had, he was a cherubim. He walked and music came out of him. But the Bible said he got exalted above himself. Therefore, Jesus said, every man that exalts himself is going to be brought down. So people choose to believe what they want to believe. But it's what do you believe? Young people, 75% of people that go to college are turned into atheists. Half of the folk that go to church are atheists on Monday. What I mean, you believe on Sunday, but Monday when trouble hit, you don't really believe it. See, it's what you believe. Because some of you say, if I say I believe it, you want it, people are going to say, why it ain't working for you? Right. Why you didn't say, I believe in tithing? So your relative, broke folks say, but you broke. Uh -huh. And they'll say, that preacher getting all his money, that church getting all, and so they'll start sowing seeds in your head. That's why you got to save something and have something. Amen. Y'all right. quiet. Come on, if you believe God, whether you go to the doctor and get the operation or don't get the operation, whether you take the pill or not, you still believe God. Am I not right? So even if you go to get the operation or take the pill, ain't brother, the, the doctor is not my healer. Jesus is my healer. He can use that doctor so I can go through. And why that doctor getting ready to cut or before he cut, I say, Lord, as they put me out, you got me covered. Come on, if I got a prescription every day and I'm going to take the prescription three times a day, every time I open the bottle, I'm going to confess I'm the healed of the Lord. So I'm not saying the pill healed me, but God is my healer. So God, let this medicine not kill me. I believe anything deadly will not hurt me. And so therefore I'll swallow this pill still confessing I'm healed. I wish I had some believers. Because whatever you ask when you pray, you ought to believe it. But you can see with these people, if we say we believe in John, if we say we believe what that preacher's saying, if we say you're going to ask us why we ain't doing it. Uh -huh. That's right. Is there anybody here believe God will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing? Yeah. If you bring your tithes and offering. Yeah. Now, how many of you say amen are tithers? Amen. Let me see how many tithers I have in here. Come on, you're tithers. And you give offering. Amen. Come on, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Because I heard a lot more amens than I see hands. You know why? Because you'll say, if I say it, he ain't looking at me. But why are you saying it? Because see, God knows what you believe. And you believe if I give my last five dollars, I give this ten dollars. If I get, I, I wish I brought the money with me because I was going to bless somebody today. I was going to show you how to pay a bill and what to do with it. I'll, I'll do it next week, but I was going to bless. Don't come preparing to receive. Are y'all following me? Don't you get greedy because I'm going to call it. There's going to be some uh, prerequisites. The Lord want to know why don't you believe what he said? Because if we say it's from heaven, if we say that's a word from God, then he's going to want to know why I'm not doing it. If you believe you're the healed of the Lord, stop playing sick. 
Stop going by, stop using sickness as a convenience. Come on, other words, I ain't going to go up there and get my healing, I'm healed. But if, I, if it manifests, then I'm not going to get my uh, check. There's people signing their children up for special education and putting them in special education class to get the money. Because they get an SSI check. If your child is special ed. So parents are signing up every child, four or five of them. They don't care. And see, that means, and then you come to church, pray for my child, and they got to learn to disability. You don't believe they healed. There's people fighting with the school system. I know my child got a special need and trying to get them in special need, not for the child's sake, for the check's sake. There's people that won't come up here when we call you for prayer. You won't come up here to get healed. You got to hold on to that brace. You got to hold on to that sickness because you're getting a disability check. But I'd rather be holding my body than have disability. Don't y'all shout me down. So we ain't really believing what's from heaven. We only going with what's convenient. Come on, verse 32, verse 32. Praise him, somebody. Verse 32, John came to you in, in the way of, of righteousness, and you did not what? Believe him. And you did not what? And you did not what? Somebody say he's talking to the religious folk. But he said the tax collectors and the harlots, what did they do? Believe him. And when they saw it, you what? You didn't afterwards relent and do what? Other words, you saw people coming from the outside. God's going to bring people from the outside, and you'll see people come into the kingdom of God later or after you've been in the kingdom, and miracles will happen in their life quicker because you've been sitting here not really believing. You go to countries where people uh, don't have a whole lot, of but when they believe God, they change their whole life. They come to God wholeheartedly. We got to stop playing church and we got to start believing. Amen, Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. So he said, harlots, people from the street, sinners will come to the kingdom and receive from God quicker than those of you that's been religious. And religious folk are not getting anywhere. We're just going through the motion. Come on, no excitement about our praise. We just singing. It ain't who's up here singing. Ain't no excitement about our praise. Believers don't matter what they're going through. Come on, I'm going to get my hands up. Listen to me. That man in the book of Mark chapter 2, it said that Jesus was in the house and there was noise in the house. And that man said, carry me to where Jesus is. So four of his friends. And the Bible said Jesus saw their faith. You always read, well, he saw them unroof the roof. He saw them. No, he saw the unity of faith. All of them believed. And he said, wait a minute, son, your sins are forgiven. How many know when your sins are forgiven, you're healed? How many know when your sins are forgiven, you're blessed? How many know when your sins are forgiven, your house has wealth in it? Do y'all believe that today? Praise him, somebody. I said, praise him, somebody. Come on, John 5, 24, and then I'll go to one more passage before I end. Y'all receiving this? So faith is simply what? Believe in God. Faith is simply what? Believe in Everybody say believing is a choice. That's why if we say John is from heaven, man, if we say this is God, you're going to wonder why we're not cooperating. That's why some people won't confess it. That's why some people, yeah, that, that, I don't want to say that's from God. I don't wanna, see, I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm laying these scriptures out and I'm going from verse to verse so you can believe God. Is there any believers in here? I said, is there any believers in here? Look here, most assuredly I say to you, John 5, 24, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word, he who hears my what? Word. He who hears my what? Word. And does what? And believe in him who what? Has what? And shall not come into judgment, but have passed. Have passed. Y'all getting this? From... See, how many when your relative died, you said, my mama just passed, my daddy just passed, my brother just passed. How many know you just passed? <laughs> See, when you in Jesus and you believe him, he said you already died and passed from death to life. So in other words, when you die physically, you already know I got an eternity. When this earthly tabernacle has been dissolved, I got another.
other bills. So you can't discourage me in life or in death. You passed when you believed. Folk that don't believe in Jesus right now, no matter how much money they have, are already dead. But when I start believing, I just pass. So you can have the funeral of my old man. I took off corruption. I took off the old man. Put off all these things, Colossians said. Mortify the flesh, Galatians says. So when you're a believer, you mortify, you get rid of. How many said, Lord, take this attitude. Lord, take this temper. Lord, take this behavior. Lord, help. No, no, you ain't dead yet. How many know ain't no dead person ever came to no funeral asking God to take anything? Come on, how many know dead people don't talk about stuff? Are y'all hearing me? So when you believe in Jesus, you say, I'm putting that off. That's dead now. No more lying. No more distrust. Come on, no more dishonesty. You still out there gambling. You still hanging in clubs. You still scratching lido cards. Come on, you still lying to my Lord, help me. He ain't helping you because you don't believe nothing. You don't believe this from heaven. Once you believe, whatever you ask, when you believe it, you receive it. I wish I had some believers in the house. God, take this smoking. No, he ain't taking it because you ain't letting it go. Lord, I don't want to drink no more. Lord, I don't want to do this liquor. I don't want, no, you, you want it because you ain't letting it go. Every time you open that bottle, every time you go to the package store. You're an alcoholic because you want to be an alcoholic. Listen to me today. You're broke because you want to be broke. The Lord teaches you how to profit. But you don't believe what he said. Am I teaching louder than y'all responding? I said, am I teaching louder than y'all responding? You're choosing what you want to believe. You don't believe tithing work, but you believe healing work. How you going to be backwards? How you going to get healed, but you won't do this? I don't believe in uh, 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 forgiving my neighbor. I'm going to hold this against them. But, but yet you believe God is blessing me. You can't pick and choose. It's from heaven or it's not. You got eternal life or you don't. I don't care what Jay-Z, I don't care any other Z or whoever Z, I know I got eternal life. Are y'all here? I don't care how much you bump and grind and rap, they ain't sending no money to your house, they ain't going to pay your bills, every record you buy, every clothing outfit you buy, they're making money off you. If anybody being played the fool, it's those that's listening to the garbage. You're being played like a fiddle. Surely I said to you, he who hears my words and believes him. What does he have? And when do I have it? I have it now. Let me help y'all with everlasting. Some of y'all know what everlasting. Everlasting has a beginning and no end. So that means the moment I believe, I step into everlasting. Once I stepped in everlasting, it just keep on going, 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 keep on going. Keep, and if I go over here and fall off this stage, I got everlasting down there as well as I got everlasting up here. Because it doesn't end. So the Bible said you got eternal life. Why is eternal? Eternity has a beginning and no end. No beginning and no end. Everlasting is inside eternity. It starts with me the moment I believe. And what happens? I pass. Is there anybody here passed this morning? I said, is there anybody here passed this morning? From death, you just started living when you came into Jesus. You just got life when you... That's why I said everything that have breath now ought to... So whether I'm absent in this body or present with the Lord, I'm still alive. Come on. God said, Jesus said, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God is the God of the living and not the dead. So if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is still alive, glory to God. He got on the mountain of transfiguration and they saw Moses and Elijah. Why? Because they still alive. 
Is there anybody believe I'm still alive? Well, well say this. This thing can't kill me. I got life. Say that. This thing can't kill me. I got life. So people think they're making fun. Oh, ha, ha, they died. You did on a funeral. I thought they were healed. You doing a funeral. See, you just don't know. That was just a little package that's being carried. When this earthly tabernacle has been dissolved. See, I still got life. You just don't. Come on. I tell folks, bury me in red when I die because ain't no sense of me being dead. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, Lacey you. Thank you, Lacey. When I die, just bury me in red because when y'all come to see me, I got life. I prayed for a friend of mine, a minister years ago, in the hospital, and I walked out of that room. The other minister that was with me when I was at Beulah, he could testify to this. Went in the room, his heart was down. Everything on the machines was down. He had cancer. And so I, I, I determined in front of that other minister, God is a healer. And I said, Lord, today he rises up. So I walked out of that room, and I saw him, a uh, spirit of his body rise up, but it went out the window. So I left there. People in the hallway shouting. People at the hospital shouting. He's a healed of the Lord. Machines. Doctors ran in there. Everybody, because the machines went haywire and crazy. They were trying to see what happened. How did his heart get normal? How did everything go up all of a sudden? I said, look at God. Amen. But I get further down the hallway later that day. Somebody said he's dead. So I asked God, I said, wait a minute. I just prayed. I saw him rise up. I saw him. But God said, you saw him go out the window. He said he's still alive. Come on, somebody. But his body was eaten up. His body, come on. And he had already said to me earlier in his life, Pastor, I'm going to die. And I want you to look after my sons and look after my boys. And I want you to know. And, he, and I asked him then at the church when he told me that. I didn't even know yet. He said, Why are you going to die if God's a healer? That's right. See, you'll have whatever you say. But he had a peace about him when I prayed for him that day. He knew where he was going. Other words, if I suffer in this body, I got another building. He walked out of there healed. People want to know why I act so different. Why I act different at the funeral. Why I wasn't crying. Why the whole church was just disappointed. Young minister lost his life before his children were grown. And I had to tell him he's alive. Anybody going to confess he's alive? Jesus said, because I live, you live also. Any believers? Lastly, lastly, go over to uh, John 11. Praise him, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't have time to go to Psalm 78, Psalm 6, uh, uh, 106, and the Lord has a problem with us not believing. He has a problem with us what? Not believing. He has a problem with us what? Not believing. Now, uh, uh, quickly, go over there. Psalms 106, verse 24. Psalms 106, verse 24, and then Psalms 78, verse 22. 22, and then verse 32. Come on, quickly. Psalms 106, they have it, they have it, and so you'll go to it real quick once they pull it up. Y'all have it? Somebody tell your neighbor, God got a problem with you if you don't believe him. He's doing too many things for us, in us, through us, for us not to believe him. That's his complaint. We'll come back to these, but that's his complaint in Psalm 78 with Israel. Look at all I've done and you don't believe me. I, I, I water came out of rock. I fed you in the wilderness. I sent bread. And you don't believe. Look, 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 verse 24 in Psalms 106. They what? Despised the pleasant land. They did not what? They did not what? See, even though you may be in the wilderness, how many know God got you covered? We may be in the wilderness right now. Come on, we may not be in our own building, but how many know we can be believers no matter where we worship at? Do I have believers? Come on. See, some folks, y'all going to drive our way or I ain't going. See, if you got believers, they get in the car. Believers don't count the miles. Are y'all following me? Their attitude is, is there a word from the Lord? Their attitude is, feed me till I want no more. Their attitude is, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Psalm 78, come on, verse 22, verse 32. 78, verse 22 and verse 32. Praise him, somebody. Praise him, somebody. It says in verse 22, because they did not what? Believe in God.
They did not what? Believe in God and did not trust. They did not trust. See, y'all getting a little disturbed by this, but these were the people of God, the Israelites. These are the ones God brought out of Egypt, and they still didn't believe him. God got a problem when you don't believe. God got a problem when you what? All right, go over to John 11. John 11, I'll end there. Verse 25, 27, and I got to end there today. Faith is simply believing. Faith is simply what? I'll show you that from the Old Testament to the New. Chapter 32 of Deuteronomy says God had a problem because they had no faith in him. They didn't believe him. Somebody say they didn't believe him. But do I have believers, believers you ought to shout loud? Hallelujah. I said, believers, you ought to shout loud. Hallelujah. Believe your needs are met. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Believe you're the healed of the Lord. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Believe you give angels charge over you. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Believe you're blessed going in and coming out. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Believe you're the head and not the tail. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Believe no weapon formed against me can prosper. Shout louder. Every tongue that rises up shall be condemned. Shout louder. Hallelujah. Come on, believe that God got me covered. Shout louder. Hallelujah. John 11, John 11. Come on, you there? John 11, verse what did I say? 25. Y'all there? Verse 25, read it loud. Jesus said to who? To Mary and Martha, and Martha comes out, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Mary comes right behind him and fine. Jesus said to her, what did he say? I am the, I am the what? And, and, you see why everybody wants you to think Jesus is make-believe, that he's a fairy tale? You know why most of you believe Jesus is a fairy tale? Because you got Santa Claus, you got Easter bunnies, and you got the two fairy. And you raise your children up on a bunch of lies, so people in the world feel like Jesus is another one of your made-up stories. Amen. They got pictures of him being a white guy with blonde hair and blue eyes. So all the black people that's being treated wrong said they don't want that Jesus. Are y'all following me? And they use that Jesus so they can put everybody else that don't look like that in their place. But see, Jesus lives on the inside of me. In him I live, move, and come on. Other words, when you live in the right kind of life, he is the life. Some of y'all like, I'm going to live my life, I'm going to live it up. Jesus is the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, though he may die, what happens? Though he may die, what happens? And whoever lives and believes in me, whoever lives and believes in me, come on, y'all, shall never die. Is there any believers in here? He asked them, do you believe this? Other words, we may transition. Some of y'all looking at that. We ain't going to all sleep. Some of us going to be caught up to meet them. And then Thessalonians said, whether we sleep, die, or not die, we live in the Lord. Am I not right? And when the trump sound, the dead in Christ, still right. Why? Because they ain't dead. If you're a believer, nothing can kill you. If you're a believer, nothing can destroy you. If you're a believer, you got the victory. So they called Mary. Mary came and said the same thing. Verse 34, quickly. Verse 34. Verse 34. And when, and when he said, where have you laid him? Come on, they were not Jesus, if you had to be here, uh, you had to done this, it ain't too late. Somebody said, it ain't too late. Ain't too late. Say, this thing, can't kill me. this thing can't kill me. Where did you lay him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, what happened? Verse 35, what happened? Not because of Lazarus being dead, because he already said, I'm going to raise him. He's weeping because we don't believe him. And they're saying, Lord, I believe you're the resurrection. Come on, Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him? And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Because Jesus know he ain't dead. Then Jesus again groaning in himself because they did break, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, come on, y'all. Jesus, what did he say? Take away. Come on, move the stone. I'm telling y'all today, you got some stones in front of your faith. You got some stones in front of what you believe. You're looking at your finances. You're looking at your flesh. You're looking at your family. You're looking at the trouble you're going. Jesus saying today, move the stone and watch me do it. 
Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he's been dead four days. Somebody say, ain't never too late for Jesus. Say, I ain't, I ain't dead. And Jesus said to her, come on, read it out. Did I not say to you, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that what? If you would what? You would see the glory of... Anybody ready to see the glory of God? Verse 41, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. They took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. They took away the stone where the dead man... How many know y'all got some dead things buried? Jesus lifted up his voice. And I in here today and said, Father, there's a dead man in there, but I thank you. Father, they crying, but I give you praise. Father, I lift my hands and head to thee and give you praise. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Already, somebody say already done. Somebody say past tense. Somebody today lift your hand and say, Father, I thank you. You already heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this. That they what? May believe that you Verse 43, and I end. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Today I say, move your stone. I say, believe God is able. I cry out to all the things you have buried and say it will not come to pass. I call it Lazarus today. Your money name, Lazarus. Your disease is named Lazarus. Your family issue is named Lazarus. Your trouble is named Lazarus. And I say, Lazarus, be healed in the name of Jesus. Lazarus, your needs are met. Lazarus, you're the head and not the tail. Lazarus, come out. Come on, stand on your feet and give God praise. People that are alive, people that are alive, come on and give them praise. Somebody shout with me, I'm coming out. Come on, shout, I'm coming out. Say, you better get out of my way. I'm a believer. Come on, believers, I'm a believer and not a doubter. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. out. I believe this. Y'all believe it today? It ain't what it looked like. It ain't what you see. It's not people counting you out. You're the healed of the Lord. You're the blessed of the Lord. You got to pray and say, Father, I thank you. You already heard me. Now, is there anybody here got a need you need God to meet? In your body? Come on, in your finances, in your family, come on, in your faith. If you believe God today, I want you to lift your hands and tell God, thank him, he already heard you.